In this video, we're going to write, compile, and deploy a smart contract to the Gurley test network using Hardhat. Hardhat is like a, a super Web3 developer tool. So let's jump right in. What I'm going to highlight is in week four, under the what is Hardhat node, there is a section called the AU suggested Hardhat flow. We label out an algorithm that you you can choose to follow anytime you're setting up a hard hat project. Um, we like to have it explicitly because we always tend to forget a certain command here or there, or we forget to install an important installate, uh, an important dependency. We come back here and it's all good. So let's follow this exact flow all the way throughout the video. I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible to show you how powerful hard hat is. All right, so step one, open a terminal, easy enough, done. Step two, run cd desktop, change directory into desktop. Um, then create a new folder via mkdir au hardhat practice. All right, perfect. Uh, and then it says, then move into that newly created folder by running a cd au hardhat practice. Boom. If you saw, if you see my commands autocomplete, that's because I press tab and you know the terminal uses the letter that you just typed in to kind of finish it. Uh, so cool, let's clear so we have a nice clean terminal here. All right, we're up to step three. It says once you are in the AU hardhat practice folder, in your terminal run npm init dash y. Let me zoom in a little bit here. All right, that initializes an empty package.json, that's great. Uh, and then step four, run npm i hardhat. All right, should be pretty quick and easy. Or maybe the hard hand solution is, is a little heavier. All right, and then step five, run mpmi.emv. Good stuff. We're almost halfway. We're almost halfway. It's pretty cool. I mean, this is all the, the setup, right? So it's pretty easy. Uh, and then step six, it says run touch.emv in order to create a .emv file at the root level of your project. And we can verify that by running ls-a. And we can see that we've created that .emv in there. Uh, cool. Step seven, run, uh, I'm just going to clear it, run mpx hardhat, which will initialize a brand new hardhat project. This is the, this is the, you know, this is the start of hardhat. Boom. And we get this, this kind of nice UI. It says, what do you want to do? We recommend, you know, this is, we're now at step eight. We have a recommended flow. You can choose whatever you want here. It's just all customization. We like to choose the create a JavaScript project. We like to press enter there because you know we, we want our root to be where we're at. Uh, yes, we want to get ignore. Uh, do you want to install this sample, this sample project's dependencies with NPM? Yes, yes. That's why we like this sample project, this, this first option, the create a JavaScript project, because the create a JavaScript project is actually just like a sample project pre-built and it just pulled it down for us. We can actually verify it with ls. Uh, we can see that we have a completely new file structure in there. And let's, let's look at this in Visual Studio Code. So the lesson highlights the kind of the, the breakdown of, hard, hard hat, of a hard hat project structure. The important ones being the contracts folder, which hold your .sol files, your, your smart contracts, any Solidity files. Uh, your scripts, which hold any .js files, you know, for scripting purposes. Test, also .js files, also uh, uh, for testing purposes. Your .emv, which is very important. Um, and most important of all in hardhat is the hardhat.config.js. This is the file that you need to master. Typically, when folks run into bugs, this file is responsible a lot of the times. It's usually like some setup issue or a config mismatch, something like that. But this is always the best file to kind of look at if you're kind of stuck on a bug and not progressing. All right, cool. So we're up to what? Um, run npx hardhat. We're up to step eight. We did step eight and it says now step nine, add require.emv config at the top of your hardhat config.js. Let's do that. So require .emv.config, and again, like we covered in the previous uh, video, uh, doing this makes it so that whenever we, we execute you know, the hardhat environment, 
this is going to load all of the variables that we put in the .env file into this file, making it accessible to the file via process.env. Super cool. Whoops. Via process.env. And let's load up the, the .env file. That's something that I didn't do in the last video, but I prepared a little more. I didn't prepare anything else. This is completely from scratch, but I prepared you know, a test private key so I can actually show a private key and an alchemy uh, API key. All right, so let's initialize our variables in the .env. We'll just do, you know, uh, test net private key. And I've separated out here a MetaMask wallet. And notice this is completely something you don't ever want to do. Share your private key, especially on a video that's going to be seen by a bunch of folks. You never want to, You never want anyone ever to see your private keys except you. You are the owner of those private keys. But this is purely for testing and learning purposes. Notice I called this account the exposed private key account. It's, it doesn't show the full name, but it's it's. Uh, let's see if I go to account details. There we go. Exposed private key. Don't use this for production because remember, uh, Ethereum uh, when you change networks, it doesn't change the account. The private key remains the same. Be very, very careful. All right, enough said. Let's export the private key. I'm gonna type in my, my password here. Copy paste it. Ah, it's a private key. All right, Visual Studio Code, boom. That's it. We've got a, a variable loaded up. Let's go to the next one. We want an Alchemy uh, testnet RPC URL. You can name this whatever you want, but make sure that whatever you name it, you'll remember because you need the name to access the, the variable. All right, and now let's go get an Alchemy RPC URL. I already have one from the previous video, right? AU practice, there we go. Let's view the key and let's get the RPC URL. Also, not something that you want to show others. Why? Because if someone has your API key, they can do a bunch of things that you don't want them to do. Uh, it's not as much of vulnerability as exposing a private key, but it's still not something you want to do. You always want to keep your API keys and any other sensitive data like that to yourself. Okay, so let's get the RPC URL, bring it back to Visual Studio Code, and boom, we're off to a racist notice. It is specifically a girly URL. I don't think we need anything more in our .env. What I always remember to do, because a lot of people face a lot of really deep errors because they don't do this simple action, save the file. That's it, that will avoid you many headaches. All right, that maybe should be in the flow actually. All right, and then we can close the file. We're all good. The cool thing about what we just did, we kind of just sweeped .env to the side and we kind of fully set up our local environment, including a full hard hat project that, you know, we're ready. We're ready to develop. All right, so I think we went through all the flow. Okay, there's two steps more. And kind of the last step is kind of very open-ended. It says set up your scripts and contracts. We'll do that, but it doesn't kind of tell you how to do explicitly, right? So let's do step 10 and then we'll do we'll do all the good stuff. It says add networks flag to hardhackconfig.js, uh, you know, comma, add your R R alchemy RPC URL under the URL and your testnet private key under accounts. Let's see how that looks like. Visual Studio, what that means, all that means is add a networks key to your module.exports in your hardhat.config file networks open it up you're going to want to name whatever test network or network that you're using this could be mainnet this could be uh, or was rinkaby uh, right now we're on a test net so we're just going to call it girly right and then uh, this kind of sub network takes two keys one is the uh, url and we can just do the alchemy testnet, what was it? Uh, test, alchemy testnet RPC URL. Alchemy testnet RPC URL, comma, and then accounts is where you load your private key. So uh, it takes it as like a, an array entry. Uh, so you can use the, the wall brackets here and then you can do, um, you know, process.env. What was it? I always forget. Testnet private key. 
I should standardize how I name my variables so I don't lose that time. All right, cool. We've got pretty much everything set up. Now it's kind of just like go crazy and develop a smart contract. I'm gonna do this super quick because I'm already at 10 minutes and that was just purely project setup. But guys, really that's the most important part. Getting to here and, and kind of feeling comfortable with that is super powerful because this, getting to this point, it, it liberates you as a Web3 developer to just focus on pure smart contract development. That's what we're gonna do. So again, we went with the sample project that Hardhat gave us. Hard, uh, Hardhat kind of, you know, with the sample project, it gives you a smart contract, it gives you a deploy script. I like that. I like to kind of work off this. That way it's not like completely from scratch. I can just kind of repurpose this for my purposes. So what I'll do is, I'm gonna do a new file, counter.sol, and I'm going to uh, fetch the the contract from Gurley from the previous activity. That way I, I don't have to write it in front of you. I, I, I could, but I don't want the video to be very long, so I'm just gonna get this contract logic, just a simple contract. Again, it's a counter, it keeps track of accounts, very easy. And I'll just copy paste it. And then what I like to do is, you know, remove any, you know, any of the boilerplate stuff that Hardhack gives you as part of the sample. Just remove it. You can keep it there if you want. Uh, sometimes this complains. That's a that's a VS Code issue. Let me see if I can quickly solve it. Uh, change the default workspace. Okay, there we go. Uh, uh, shoot me a a DM on Discord or ask on the town hall if you want to know what the heck that was. It was just like a, a, a versioning thing where VS Code has a set version. And, uh, anyway, uh, okay, we have a counter.sol. Now, now that I've loaded up the contract, I know that I wanna deploy this to the Gurley testnet, I can go to my deploy script. This is all the boilerplate that Hardhat gives you. I'm going to do away with 95% of this. So for one, like, all of this commenting, the HRE variable, which is known as a magic variable, AKA a variable that either you can or don't have to include. It's just always gonna be there. That's why it's a magic variable. So I'm gonna do away with it. I don't need it explicitly. And what I'm gonna do is do away with all of this logic pertinent to that like sample project and just kind of one-to-one -one replace contracts you know, the sample project code with what I want. So I have a counter uh, contract, so I'm just gonna replace everything that I see pertinent to the lock contract. Counter, uh, now it's a lowercase counter because it was a lowercase lock. And then, oh, there's another uppercase one. I wanna replace it there. Boom, and then this deploy, like the deploy values, that's relevant to the sample script. You'll notice if we look at our counter.sol, we don't, ha we don't even have a constructor, which means we have an implicit constructor and an implicit constructor does not take any arguments, doesn't do anything, it just deploys the contract. All right, and then one more lowercase. The lowercase is just representative of the contract instance. So cool, and that's it. Like, uh, let's do, and we can just do counter deployed to and then another lowercase. So notice, I didn't really do anything. I, I didn't look at any notes. I didn't you know, use like expert knowledge. I literally just took a sample project and I repurposed it for my purposes. So, cool, and that's it. That, like, that's, we're kind of done. That's step 10 or 11, right? It said, set up your scripts and contracts, then deploy in a flash. Yep, I, I, um, I set up everything here. Now let's deploy this to Gurley via our terminal. So I'm gonna clear it. And the way you do it is one, I'll just super quick show that you can always do MPX hardhat is the typical kind of, I wanna run a, a command on this hardhat project. MPX hardhat run scripts, and then you have to put the whole path to that file. Deploy.js. You'll notice, oh, let's see, okay. Running into errors. So let's see, the project cannot be compiled, HH606, the Solidity version pragma statement in these files doesn't match. All right, this is a common error. I'm glad we got it. Let's get it out of the way. That just indicates to me, and again, the hardhat config.js is the most important file ever. That's where you wanna go. 
So it was just complaining that my contract is saying that it wants to be compiled with 0.8.4, but that hard hat config, I'm telling it I want 0.8.17 for the project. So we can just do this, and that's it. And remember to save the file, of course. Uh, now I'll run it again, and it'll probably show like downloading, downloading new compile, compiler. Oh, okay, it didn't download it, I guess. But um, notice it was super quick, right? It deployed it already. And actually, we can run it again. And what the heck? Like it deployed it to the same project. Why is it doing that? Because Hardhat gives you a, a local network for you to work with. It's basically like a quick VM. It, it, it's, a, it's basically a, a personal private test blockchain for you to use for testing that only exists during the lifetime of your script. So like notice here, we're just running a deploy script. It deploys the contract, then it just stops existing because it's a, it's a virtual blockchain, right? So obviously we don't want that. It has its own uses, obviously for testing and stuff like that. We want to do that same command, npx hardhat run scripts slash deploy.js dash dash network go early, right? And I'll run that. Well, before I run that, that dash dash network is just saying, hey, go into that hard hat config file, please. Look at networks, you know, dash dash network, and give me whatever you got under Gurley. That's all it's saying. So let's run it. We are now deploying, like, this is what, 15 minutes? Uh, we wrote and compiled and deployed a whole smart contract to the Ethereum Gurley test network, we should get our, our contract address back shortly, right? Should be deployed, there we go. Counter deployed to 0x58, uh, don't tell me that's the same one as the previous ones, right? 0x, okay, uh, just, just a, a similar preceding five. So we can actually uh, check and see, there we go. We just deployed a whole smart contract to the Gurley testnet. That's awesome. So there you go, guys. Hardhat is super powerful, super awesome. You can use it for a whole bunch of things. We just went on and deployed and compiled and did all these things, let alone what if we needed to test, what if we needed more scripting. Hardhat kind of just gives you everything. One thing that I also wanted to, to highlight is we didn't see this, but the when we ran the command, actually we did see it appear on the terminal and said like, you know, contract compiling or something like that. That compilation, as we saw in this week's content, produces these two very, uh, you know, some very important artifacts contained here in the counter.json. It produces the ABI, hard hat, very neatly kind of uh, indexes it here for you, and the bytecode, the contract bytecode. So, Super good stuff, master hard hat, and you will become a master Web3 developer. Thanks, guys.